Okay, in this video we're going to look at a method for solving differential equations known as variation of parameters. So this is what we'll take as our setup. Let's say we have a differential equation and it's a second order differential equation of the form y prime plus, sorry, y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals a function g of x. So in theory, we can let these p of x and q of x be any nice functions, but in practice, often they're just constants. Um, but we'll develop this theory for p of x and q of x being functions. So let's suppose we have this differential equation and we have a homogeneous solution to this differential equation or to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. In other words, where we replace g of x with zero given by c1 times y1 of x plus c2 times y2 of x. So in other words, y1 and y2 are uh, linearly independent solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so good. So now our strategy for forming a solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation is to assume the following. So assume that our particular solution, we'll call it y p of x, is of the form v1 of x times y1 of x plus v2 of x times y2 of x. And so we'll shorten this as v1 y1 plus v2 y2. So we'll leave off the dependence on x um, when it's clear. Okay, good. So from here, um, we want to see what rules do v1 and v2 have to follow in order to satisfy our original non-homogeneous differential equation. So what we'll do is we'll assume that this yp is a solution to this differential equation, plug it in to the differential equation, and see what falls out. So that means we know that yp double prime plus p of x times yp prime plus q of x times yp equals g of x. Good. So that means we need to calculate yp double prime and yp prime. So uh, we'll do that over here. So notice that we have yp is equal to v1 y1 plus v2 y2. So that makes yp prime equal to v1 prime y1 plus v1 y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 plus v2 y2 prime using the product rule. And then yp double prime will be equal to, again, we'll have to use the product rule here. So we'll have v1 double prime y1 plus v1 prime y1 prime. So that's from this first term spreading out. Good, and then we'll have something from the second term spreading out. So we'll have v1 prime y1 prime plus v1 y1 double prime. Good, so as we can see, that's from the second term spreading out. And then we'll have four more terms from the last two terms spreading out. So let's see what we get there. So we'll get v2 double prime y2 plus v2 prime y2 prime plus uh, v2 prime y2 prime plus uh, v2 y2 double prime. Okay, good. So now we can plug this into our differential equation and see what we get. So notice uh, we'll get the following. So we'll have um, v1 double prime y1 plus twice v1 prime y1 prime plus v1 y1 double prime. So that's what we'll have for the first bit of yp double prime, and this will all be added to v2 double prime y2 plus twice um, v2 
2 prime y 2 prime plus v2 y2 double prime. Good. So we'll have that. And then we add that to p of x times the quantity, and so we have y p prime. So let's see what we get there. We'll have v1 prime y1 plus v1 y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 plus v2 y2 prime times p of x, which we have in the beginning. Okay, great. And then finally, we have this is all added to q of x times yp, but we're writing yp as v1 y1 plus v2 y2. And then as we made our assumption, this should all be equal to g of x. Good. So now let's see what we've got here. Notice if we take <coughs> this term, this term, and this term, those all can have v1 factored out, and if we factor v1 out of all of these terms, um, we end up with um, y1 double prime plugged into the differential equation, and since y1 is a solution to the homogeneous differential equation, we can mark all of these off because they add up to zero. Great. And then the same thing can be done with this term. So here we have v2y double prime, v2y prime, and v2y2. And now notice all of those together look like v2 times y2 plugged into the original differential equation. But again, we know y2 is a solution to the homogeneous differential equation. So all these also cancel to zero. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll start from there. Okay, so I've cleaned up the board and summarized what we've got going on. So we've got this differential equation, y double prime plus p of y, y prime, sorry, p of x, y prime, plus q, y equals g of x, and then y2, y1 and y2 are linearly independent solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. And then finally, we take yp um, <clears throat> to be v1, y1 plus v2, y2, where v1 and v2 are functions that are to be determined. We plug that into the differential equation and then remember there was some stuff that simplified because of our assumption that y1 and y2 were solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation and that gives us this following equation. So notice we've got this bit which is related to taking the second derivative of yp. We've got this bit which is related to taking the first derivative of yp and then we have that equal to g of x. So notice um, the bit corresponding to no derivative of yp was gone again because of our assumption with the homogeneous differential equation. Now we're going to make a new assumption And this new assumption will serve uh, as a simplification tool. So our new assumption will be the following. So v1 prime y1 plus v2 prime y2 equals 0. So we'll make that assumption, which means all of this will cancel to 0. And so this may seem like too big of an assumption, but we'll work it into the final solution and you'll see that it'll be fine. And now let's see what we can do with that. So if this sum of functions is equal to zero, then we can take the derivative of this sum of the functions of these functions and that will also be equal to zero. So let's see what we get when we do, when we do that. So taking the derivative here, we get v1 double prime y1 plus uh, v1 prime y1 prime plus v2 double prime y2 plus v2 prime y2 prime equals zero. Great, and then finally that means we can write v2 double prime y2 plus v1 v, uh, double prime y1 equal to negative v1 prime y1 prime minus v2 prime um, y2 prime. 
So in other words, we can write the bits with second derivatives of the v's in terms of things with first derivatives of v's. And now, let's see what effect that will have here. So if we plug this equation into here, that will allow us to get rid of these and introduce a minus v1 prime y1 prime and v2 prime y2 prime, which will allow us to cancel these twos down to a one. Okay, so let's see what we get. So by our original assumption, we got rid of the coefficient of p of x. And then um, by a descendant of our original assumption, in other words, its derivative, we were able to simplify this term, which had to do with the second derivative. So now uh, I'll clean up the board, and then we'll summarize again what we have as far as simplification in terms of this assumption. OK, so I've cleaned up the board, and then I've uh, put us to the point where our assumption brings us and along with the differential equation. So recall that our assumption was that v1 prime y1 plus v2 prime y2 was equal to 0. And then the assumption that y1 and y2 were solutions to the homogeneous, along with the derivative of this assumption, allowed us to simplify this expression, which is our particular solution plugged into the differential equation, to y1 prime, sorry, v1 prime y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 prime equals g of x, because we want this to satisfy this differential equation. Okay, great. So now if we look at this, <coughs> This gives us a system of equations for v1 prime and v2 prime. So we can uh, write that as a matrix equation. So that gives us the following matrix equation. So we have v1 prime, v2 prime here. And then over here we have 0 and g of x. Good. And then the matrix we have in this case is the following y1 y1 prime, and then y2, y2 prime. OK, good. So from here, we can, first of all, notice that this matrix is invertible because we assumed that these were linearly independent solutions. And since they're linearly independent solutions, that ensures that this matrix is invertible. Good, and then the next thing that we can do is we can use uh, any method that we want to from linear algebra in order to write down a solution um, to this. Uh, for instance, maybe we would want to use Kramer's rule. Okay, now we can use Kramer's rule from linear algebra in order to write down a solution for uh, v1 prime and v2 prime. So we'll do that as follows. So we know v1 prime is equal to the determinant of y2, y2 prime, um, sorry, of 0, g of x, y2, y2 prime, divided by um, the determinant of this matrix. So that would be the determinant of y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. OK, fantastic. So now notice if we take that determinant, we get the following um, minus minus y2 times g of x over w, y1, y2, where w is the Ronskian. So in other words, this w is equal to uh, the determinant of this matrix. OK, good. And now, similarly, we can write down a solution for v2 prime. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll put a summary up. OK, so I've cleaned up all the calculations, and I've put up a summary on the board. So let's start from the beginning. So we're given a non-homogeneous second order linear differential equation, y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals g of x. And the general solution, so the most general solution of this is given by the following. y equals c1y1, c2y2, 
And this is the homogeneous part. So in other words, y1 and y2 are linearly independent solutions to the corresponding homogeneous uh, differential equation. And then v1, y1, plus v2, y2, and this is the particular part. And so this is what we spent this entire video constructing, these functions v1 and v2. So if you recall, we ended up with a matrix equation involving v1 prime and v2 prime, with, with which we used Kramer's rule to write down a solution for v1 prime and v2 prime. But we can integrate that solution to get a solution for v1 and v2, and that's what I've done here. So I urge you to fill in the little detail that we left off. So here we have v1 is um, negative, the antiderivative of g of x times y2 over the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And v2 is the antiderivative of g of x y1 over the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And just as a reminder, the Ronskian of y1 and y2 is the determinant of this matrix. So by column, it's y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. Okay, good. So this uh, finishes the video.